Okay, I'm out here in the garage again. I uh, got the bike plugged in and uh, gonna make another change. So I'll just open up the file. Open up the file. This is the one we created last time. I've got them in source control because, well, tech, so that's the way I play. Now, I'm uh, making a small change today, which is we're disabling the fuel cut because um, I want to see what that actually does. Um, I've been happy with the other changes. Uh, the disable closed loop seems to have worked. Um, the bike's back to being sort of as jerky as it was at stock. So I think that's just, yeah, it is what it is. So um, there's still improvement uh, to be made, but at the moment, yeah, I think I've undone uh, the impact of uh, the exhaust change and the increased flow. Uh, now I want to see what that does. Now, um, the second thing I want to do is the logs. Uh, I'm not 100% sure in the log file, and well, I think I know the answer. Um, but where I have, oh, actually, this is a an interesting um, graph. So yeah, I took a, a before. Um, uh, of a, a section of engine braking. So this is engine braking from, uh, yeah, obviously um, uh, about 4,600, there you go, 4,627 RPM, um, down through the, the 3,000 mark. And you can see there's actually one, one line that's hard to do it with a touchpad going down to here, and then the actual uh, gradient of the line changes here. So there's a very significant change at 3,000. Um, <clears throat> and apparently there's a recall out at the moment in uh, Canada at least uh, to fix that. Um, so yeah, it'll be interesting to see um, if there's any impact just, and that this is one of the things I wanna check just to how it handles or what the impact is on the engine braking. Um, so, I just uh, confirm that I set that. Okay, gonna save that. Now I'm going to read, turn ignition 12 volt off. I can appreciate why they're doing this now. I was sort of thinking about it and the idea here is, here is for the logging box to acknowledge or get itself set up and confirm its connection so it's a hundred percent sure although i'm surprised they're not saying hey double check what the lights are doing but we'll press okay see if depending upon what order you plugged it in you might get some interesting behavior um so if you had it all powered up and connected to the computer before you plugged it into the okay so that's good Open a new stock bin. No, I don't want to do that. Anyway, so we're sure of that. Let's write to it. Now, I've got my uh, laptops on power. I've got the uh, my massive power bank connected to the bike. And I can appreciate, given uh, how long it took last time, yep, agree to all, I can appreciate how long it took last time, why they're... Um, they're doing this because if you lost power to either of them during this ride, like your, your bike battery dropped and they can drop quite a lot. So I'll just play this game again. Um, yeah, the bike battery could drop. Um, your laptop could cark it. So laptop's on main, although this is a brand new laptop. Um, but it's on... There we go, bike is on, um, and we're away. So, yeah, um, you know, I think I yapped on about it last time, but, you know, it's expecting a solid 12 volts on the comms line, and if the battery's dropped down to 9 volts because it's close to at it, then, yeah, that's potentially going to screw up the comparator. Um, 
And yeah, if your laptop carks it in the middle of a write, well, you're going to be in trouble. Um, so yeah, it's better to just be sure that you're not going to lose power and, and have a disrupted write. Um, to be honest, I think, um, I know they say connect a charger to the battery, but I think that's impractical because it's like, well, you can connect it, but not turn it on. Um, so, or you can get yourself a matchbox car with an old Valiant charger and just sort of, you know, clip that to the battery. Um, and it would still satisfy the wording, but yeah, uh, you need an uninterruptible power supply connected to the battery, um, to maintain that. ECU voltage, operational voltage. So that's what I've got. Um, and I'm not making excuses. I kind of understand what they're trying to do. They're just trying to make sure that people don't fuck it up. Um, and uh, yeah, my power bank's pretty hefty. Um, so yeah. Anyway, this takes as long as it takes just for one tiny little piece of data, but then it does have to write the whole file in. Um, so yeah, haven't played with anything else. Oh, one thing I'm about to do, so after I do this, I'll go out and write it. Um, and I'll just do a, a little bit of some deceleration checks. But uh, shortly after that, I want to switch it into mode four um, because I'm not sure if the TPS, this shouldn't say TPS. This should actually be BTV. It should be doing the electronic throttle valve. Um, because it's not the, well, yeah, it's, if it's genuinely TPS, then that's the throttle position sensor on the throttle. So that's how much you twisted the wrist. And, that's not that that varies per ride mode um now i don't think they'd be that stupid um but the documentation sucks balls so you never know um so my attitude at the moment is well if i go out and well there's not much variations around the mid-range from each of the different modes so for me um safest thing to do is put it in mode four and, um, you know, put it in sort of from low down, like third gear, just sort of idling along and then snap it fully open. And mode four, I'd be able to get 100% on the grip. Um, and I can just, I should be able to, if, if I look at the logs and never see that 100%, um, then I know it's good. If I do see that 100%, then I know that every log I take I have to actually read back the ride mode and uh, and that's going to be annoying so yeah um, so I created a, a just a MySQL database well, on this laptop actually um, and it's recording uh, that's where I'm putting the logs in just so it's easier to analyze um, looking for trends and stuff like that so, because there's just such a huge volume of data, it just makes it easier. Anyway, uh, we'll see. This is still going, nearly done. And I'll just shut up and let it finish. That sounds positive. Clearing fault codes. ECOs, turn ignition key off. Yeah, off. And then I'll yap on for a bit. We'll see how we go. So, actually, it's kind of funny. Given they want it to go 10 seconds, they should be um, displaying a little timer on it. That make it really convenient. And there we go. So we'll call that done. 
and I'm going to shut this down and uh, go for a ride. Let me just see. Yes, I want to save the bin file. Yep. Yep. Okay. Well, thank you very much.